Greetings, friends. It's Friday evening, April 24th. Today is also National Arbor Day. I hope you had some opportunity to enjoy this beautiful sunshine today. How was your week? For some of you, it might have been heavy. Getting tired of being stuck at home being bombarded with all the negative news coming at us all the time. For some of us, it has been a long week. It's Friday evening. So I invite you now to center yourself, to relax, and to ask God's Spirit here into our prayers as I light the candle. Please pray with me. God of love, sometimes we feel we just try to get through it. Be with us on these journeys. Bring us home and comfort. Remind us that we will be okay, that you, the risen Christ, is walking with us. This week, so many things have happened in our lives and some of the days seem to blur together. Some of these things, the last couple of days, have been wonderful and caused our hearts to rejoice. Other things have torn at our spirits, seeking to bring us down. Lift us up, O oh Lord. Open our eyes to you. Help us to see your presence in all your world. Give us courage and strength for all the journeys ahead so that even flat tires and fussing children will not deter us from your destination. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we down for the whole week, we will also tonight read the scripture reading for this coming Sunday. Do that so that on Sunday you are familiar with the story. And I hope that it will help you then on Sunday during worship service to reflect on it more often. The passage from today is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. And we focus on the last couple of verses on the story of the road to Emmaus. Verses 28 to 35. As they drew near the village they were heading for, Jesus made as if to go further, but there prevailed upon him, stay with us, for night comes quickly, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When they are way at the table, he took the bread, said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished out of their sight. When they said to each other, were not our hearts filled with ardent yearning when he was talking to us on the road and explained the scriptures? They immediately got up and returned to Jerusalem. There, they found the eleven and their companion gathered together. They were greeted by these words. Yes, it is true. The Lord is risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the road and how Jesus made himself known when he broke bread with them. I hope the Spirit of God will help you understand. We continue our travel on the road to Emmaus. And just to refresh your memories, the two of them were walking totally saddened by the situation, by the fact that Jesus died and they had not experienced him. As they were talking, Jesus appeared to them and explained to them scripture. And they are on their way to Emmaus, back home. This is now where our story continues. The focus here is on hospitality and on baking and breaking. Some of you might know I like to bake, 
and especially in these days, I like to bake bread. Baking bread is much more than just what we eat for lunch or sometimes put in the toaster for breakfast. Breaking, baking and breaking bread is much more, but showing hospitalities. And it is in the, literally in the breaking of bread that Jesus made himself known. And Jesus uses exactly the same words as we hear them every single time we celebrate communion. It is through hospitality and the sharing of bread that we know that Christ is with us and that we can taste Christ's goodness. Now we can't invite or have friends over, but we can still offer hospitality. Hospitality. I did not realize that hospitality and hospital come from the same root. Hospitality and hospital. And in those words, the root word of host is in it as well. We all like to be good hostesses or hosts as we want to have our friends over. What does it mean to be a good host? To offer hospitality. To be a host is to welcome and to care. And they said in this time right now, we cannot invite friends over to share literally bread at our tables. What we can't do is still offer hospitality as we share and as we care. Just yesterday, a friend of mine who I haven't seen in years texted me just out of the blue. We chatted and then because texts can only go so far, I called him, we laughed, and we spent lots of time together. It was so good to hear his voice. And just this morning, one of you caught me literally out of the blue just to say thank you. And we chatted. And it was so good to hear her voice at the other end. And she even said, I miss you. I miss you too. I miss all of you. I miss all of you, not only on Sunday mornings, but whenever we had a time to share and to break bread together. I miss you. I miss seeing you. I miss sharing fellowship with you. I miss eating with you. And I miss being in worship with you in real life. We are still asked to offer hospitality in these days, even though we cannot sit at the same table together. We are asked to show hospitalities. Hospitality is to welcome and to care. How do we do this in times like that? By picking up the phone, writing a note, texting, emailing, being in a Zoom call together, and just to say, I care for you. I miss you. I love you. I care for you. There are many, many ways in which we can do that. To share and to break the bread even though we are not sitting at the dinner table together. I miss you all. And there are many ways in which we can say, I am thinking of you. Today is Friday and it's the last couple of Fridays. I want to share with you faith formation resources as they are printed from the illustrated ministries. This is the same in, um, company in which we have gotten the coloring posters from. For the third Sunday of Easter, the story of the friends going to America is discussed as well. I'd like to show some of the children some coloring. And then there's also, oh, sorry about that, the pages stick together. Some more coloring here. Amaze and time to doodle. 
And one thing, one page which really spoke to me, thinking of you, coloring page. Thinking of you card means I care. I love you, I miss you. And I show hospitality. I am the host by showing that I care for you. I hope that you find many ways in which you can say to each other, I care for you. I am thinking for you. I want to be a good host and show hospitality, even though we are not sitting at the same table together. I invite you now to join me in prayer on this Friday night. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for this week, and thank you that you are with us. Thank you that we can know you by the breaking of the bread. And we ask for your power, that we feel your resurrection presence, and that you guide us in the decisions we make, how we care for one another. If it is a smile, if it is a wave, if it is to be patient in the grocery store, if we let somebody else come in first, if it is to write a card, to pick up the phone, or in the many ways in which we can say, I am thinking of you, I care for you. Help us to understand that whenever we eat and whenever we drink, you are with us and that we can share your hospitalities to other people as well. Be with us tonight as we start the weekend and that we can experience you on whichever journey we are. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for caring. And I hope that to see you all on Sunday morning for worship in which you already know the text of the friends on their walk to Emmaus. Have a good night and enjoy our day. Bye-bye. <laughs>